Hi guys, Hi guys. And welcome to another episode of Bar Exam. I'm your host, Allie Rayner, aka Al Rain on all socials. And I'm here with the Bar Exam crew. Say hello and welcome to Eric G. How you doing, Eric? Well, uh, I'm good. <laughs> and Mr. Marcus is in the building as well. Welcome, Marcus. Yo, what's the word? What's up? Real quiet today and we also have our producer shane g with us as well what's up shane what's the deal y'all how we doing good good now this week coming before the bar are the two 2024 bet awards and drake's newest single with camilla caballo so let's first get into the BET Awards. So at this year's BET Awards in Los Angeles, Taraji P. Henson hosted the event with a night full of celebrities and different performances from stars like Tyla, Lotto, Ice Spice, Lorilla, Megan Thee Stallion, and even some legends were in the room as well, like Lauren Hill, Wyclef from the Fugees, and they also performed with YG Marley. Um, and then there were even some surprise performances from people like Will Smith, Kirk Franklin, uh, Childish Gambino, Kiki Palmer, and Eris and Van Van. So a lot, a lot of um, performances and a lot of celebrities in the room for the BET Awards. So I want to see what the fellas thought about this year's award show. Um, there were a lot of winners, uh, like Killer Mike accepted Album of the Year, which is interesting because he also got, uh, I think he got the same award at the Grammys as well. Um, and then Usher received the Lifetime Achievement Award, and they did a lot of um, performances to tribute him as well. So um, that was really entertaining. I liked Tiana Taylor and um, Victoria Monet's performance the most, personally. Um, but what did you guys think? What What are some um, some highlights? What are some takeaways that you guys have for the BT Awards this year? Uh, you go Why first? did Lil Durk and J. Cole win Best Collaboration for All My Life? You didn't like that one? Out of the picks that were here? What were the other options? Drake, Sexy Red, and Scissor, Rich Baby Daddy. Usher, Summer Walker, and 21 Savage. Good, good. Nikki and Uzi, everybody. Lola Brooke, Lotto, and Young Miami, Don't Play With It, the remix. Kanye, Ty Dalla, Rich the Kid, and Playboy Cardi, Carnival. This is kind of my problem with this list already, but I'll get into that in a minute. Cardi B featuring Megan Thee Stallion, Bongos. Nicki Minaj versus, or sorry, Nicki Minaj and Ice Spice with Barbie World. And then Beyonce versus or, or with Kendrick Lamar, uh, America has a problem remix. So, I mean, yeah, out of these picks, yeah, I guess they would have won. But I'm sorry, but what are these picks that they even chose? A lot of these songs, a lot, a lot of people have not even heard before. <laughs> I mean, the I didn't even know. Well, I will agree with that because I didn't hear about the America Has a Problem remix. I remember the original, so that's why I'm surprised that it's even in this category right now. But I thought that was from like a year or two ago. So that's why I'm surprised about that one. But um, that's I, another I, problem I have, too. A lot of these songs are very old. Nikki and Uzi, everybody, that song came out like two years ago. No, everybody came out just didn't they just come out a few like six months ago? Oh, was that the newest single on her uh album? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. You know what? I was sorry, I was thinking of a past collaboration that they had, but okay, so you know what? I'll give you that one. But even some of these some of these other ones, like Rich Baby Daddy, like yeah, that's kind of a newer single, but best collaboration. I don't think it's I'm sorry. I can think of a lot of better collaborations that BET could have chose than these. And I get that they were kind of going for the R&B and rap type, type of like blend. But if we're just going off of collaborations, 
just in general, I'm sorry, but these are not good picks to me. There's some good picks here, but like Lola Brook, Lotto, and Young Miami don't play with a remix. I love that song, but why are we putting this? Why, why is that on the best collaboration? So I got a serious question. This is a because this is a this is a I don't know question. Maybe Shane can look it up since he's you know. Is BET black owned or is it still by Viacom? Is that I remember that was a thing a, a, like years ago, and then I don't know if it switched hands or if it did, but is is like I don't know the current structure of BT because I haven't watched, I mean kept up with that. So that's a legitimate, honest question of I don't know. Like I want to find out. Second, oh, well then there, there's your answer right there. Hmm. There, well, there's your that's your answer right there. Well. So, so Again, I'm looking at, uh, okay, so another, just another example. I'm looking at best group right now. Was the best group of the BET Awards of 2024 Ty Dolla Sign and Kanye? Are we really going to sit here and say that? No. But that, guess what? They were the winners. Mm. But guess what? Out of a horrible nomination list. Hmm. Juan Moore, Maverick, City Music, Flow, City Girls, Blast, Bino Redux, which is the only really duo that you can really put here besides the 2 Chains and Lil Wayne duo that they put here. But it's like, what groups are they even putting in this nomination list for anybody to even be like competitive with each other? Like, it's not even competitive. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like you're putting one group in this just to be a landslide above everybody else. Oh, hmm. so and that doesn't make the people below you that you got a landslide victory over, it doesn't make them look any better either. Hmm. That's just kind of how I look at it. Okay, so I'm guessing this is the owner. Yeah, this is the owner of CBS Entertainment Group. Okay, so that's George Cheeks. Okay, so now we can have a better understanding of who's so, actually behind BET right now. Could This is a fair question. How many of us right now, let's just say we did the bar exam Cinco de Mayo edition. Do we really have a pulse on Latin American music? The three of us. <laughs> the closest that we have is that Eric is in Phoenix and there's an <laughs> influx of Mexicans. That's the closest that we collectively have. So guess what our list would be? Trash. <laughs> it really would be. It would not, it would not be the essence of any culture. Dominican, Puerto Rican, Mexican, South American. Like it wouldn't, we would. We would Babs Bunny would win, <laughs> you know, because that would be our. That's the only way that I can equate what BET has done to the BET Awards. So let me but, let me pause you. Let me pause you right there. I think this is actually an excellent time to run our clip. Yeah, okay. I think you're right. I'm really excited to be here, but I wanted to get some some things off my chest first. This isn't personal, but uh, I just feel like I should have more BET awards. We heard that. I heard I'm that. serious. It's the Black Entertainment Television Awards. How much more entertaining do I have have to do? Because I got two personas. It, it's just the math of the fact. Because you cooking. It doesn't really make sense. I have more Grammys than Will Smith, which makes no sense. But I have the same amount of BET awards as Sam Smith. Does that make You're even from America. sense to you guys? Me and Sam Smith are neck and neck at the Black Entertainment Television. It's got to be. If I have to like do, um, I don't know, Baby Boy or something, just let me know. I'll, I'll have Jonathan May just put me in a headlock, shave my head. I'll do it. It's in the crowd. All right. That's funny as hell, though. <laughs> now that I got that off my chest, um, I'm not gonna lie. Don't 
Okay, so Childish Gambino is getting some things off of his chest about the award situation as well. Um, I didn't even know that that was a statistic, that there was even a comparison between Childish Gambino and Sam, who was it? It was Sam Smith. Sam Smith <laughs> having uh, awards at the BET Awards. I did not realize that. Um, do you guys think that he has a point? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, one hundred percent. Look at the show Atlanta. Or is he? I mean, come on. Is he like? Yeah. How? Bruh, it's so, it's so much to unpack there because there is so much truth and validity in what he's saying, you know, that who who has he lost to? And then you say, oh, well, so in if you, if he's equal to Sam Smith, really? Childish Gambino? Everybody was doing that little stupid get, ooh, gun move and shit with no shirt because that song was everywhere. Like, I'm... How many times have we seen BET or the BET Awards miss the mark, right? You know, I, it's actually comparable to the NFL in this sense. When the NFL has to make a decision or to do something politically, social justice or whatever, the, you know what the NFL does uh, without question? Miss. They've never done it right. Whatever they're trying to execute, wrong. Whatever they're trying to honor, they didn't. They missed this person, or they did that. They they always get it wrong. Baseball has gotten it right. Uh, NBA gets it right. Some hockey has gotten better at getting it right. But the NFL is always wrong, and BET is the same way. They're always wrong. They're always on. What they say, the wrong side of history. That's that's what BET is. The wrong side of the fucking equation, time and time again. They never fucking get it right, ever. And it's supposed to be us. They haven't gotten it right since FUBU. <laughs> I'm really shocked that you guys have this take because, to be honest, I thought they did a pretty, pretty good job. Like, I felt like the performance with uh, Lauren Hill and Wyclef w was dope. And then with YG Marley coming out too, like old school with new school, I thought that was cool. I thought her outfit was different, but... I thought that it was just a cool, like you saw a lot of like the older, uh, or I'm sorry, like the the newer acts and even some of like the 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 older acts. But I feel as though they're not even mainstream. Like Marsha Ambrosius was up there doing a tribute to Usher as well with like Lotto and and Kiki Palmer and stuff. And so Usher like asked like Ticketmaster for a refund. Hmm. Usher asked Ticketmaster for a refund. <laughs> for what? For that horrible, per, where, there was no dudes that could have performed no Usher songs. I will say, I yeah, did, I did like that no, was a weird choice. That was a very like, weird choice. Now I was and, like, why did they choose her for that? And and this is this is gonna get into no disrespect either. Yeah, but it was it was one of those moments where it was like, why would you? Uh, uh, okay, I guess I can't. Well. Yeah. The only part that did make me look at it weird was when Lotto was up there and she was doing Ludacris's part from Yeah. And I, that's the only part that I was like, couldn't we have called Ludacris? Like, I'm sure he would have showed up. I feel like he's been popping up to a lot of concerts lately. So, Okay, so let me, let me interject here and let me just, I just have a very simple question to ask. When is the last time you guys stopped what you were doing to watch the BET Awards? Oh, sh when they had the, uh, I can tell you, stopped what I was doing to watch. Yeah, it. like uh, stopped what you were doing. Like, uh, middle of the day, you were like, oh, I got to make sure I watch the BET Awards. When, uh, when they, it was a time that they had all the battle rappers on the cypher. Oh, I remember oh, okay. that. What year was that? I don't know, but that's 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 what I can consciously go back to. to like, oh my god, I gotta check. And I think it might have been another year with the site, the cipher, when like, uh, and I think it was presented by like Sprite because it was like Eminem. It was uh, it had like DJ. It had a whole bunch of the ciphers were picked by the DJs like for the difference. So that's when the cipher actually met. Something was the last time that I I was like, oh no, I gotta check it out. Are you talking about like the era when like 
good music had like that cipher and everybody like, had a cipher. Like they had one. It was like a, it, like, it was like cipher was like yeah. yeah, yeah. You were yeah, looking. Yeah, yeah. I was okay. looking more for. I was looking more forward to the cipher than I was the performances. Okay. So, Ali, what about you? For me, I think it has to be kind of around that time. I think it was like early. I want to say it was like early 2000s, like when like maybe like 2010 or something. Okay, so that was like okay. 2014 for for the one that Marcus is talking about. So yeah, for me, it was like maybe a little bit before then when I stopped watching. So we were, I, I remember still checking for it whenever um, M did his cypher. I don't remember exactly when that was because I remember he did a cypher with like, a bunch of the i don't even want to say d12 i think it was just a bunch of people that were uh signed to shady at the time and that was like one of the main times that i was still checking for it too was when they were still doing the cyphers but beyond that i can't really name a recent time where we were checking for the bet awards and i guess that leads me to my ultimate point is that that is our main problem. We are in a space where, okay, the 2011. So see, mm -hmm. even a little bit before the battle that he even brought up before that. So so the battle rappers was in 14 and then the Shady was in 11? Yep. So then that's, so after the battle rappers went and went downhill, because I feel like that was a last ditch attempt. Yeah, like the one in 2014. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like, cause that was when the battle rappers, like that were on like URL and shit like that, on Smack and shit like that, like actually had a chance to be on the BET stage. So that was when they had their shot. But I guess looking just back on the BET awards, we look for moments, right, to happen at these type of award shows, but. For whatever reason, whatever it is, we haven't had that in quite a while. I feel like maybe last year when Quavo and Offset like reunited on stage at the BET Awards for the first time in like a long time. That was like the first moment that like I remembered in a long time that like actually meant something. But like besides that, the BET Awards like haven't had a lot of moments to like like mean something like i remember being in high school and like we would stop what we were doing to watch whatever was going on before the bet awards during the bet awards and afterwards and it was like you it, it encapsulated like that whole day and it's like we don't even even care about that type of stuff anymore so are we at a point now to where that doesn't matter and like that's just only reserved for like the big award shows or can BT actually bounce back from that? I feel as though like they're actually, I feel like they had a better chance this time, this year, because it does seem like they had a lot of money behind them. Like now that we know that Paramount and CBS is behind it, it explains why like there were such elaborate sets and so many performances. I was looking like Jesus, like there's, there there was a, a a lot of people who like had multiple performances. Lotto was up there twice. Megan went up there twice. I think Lo went up there twice. Like people went up there a few times. So I I felt like maybe this year, like that it was their attempt at trying to be like a fusion of old BET with like a little bit of like the Grammys. Like, I don't know. I feel like they were trying to be more dramatic, but maybe they didn't work on the the, the story and con connecting it to the audience enough. You know, maybe they just put the money into like the performances and the big dramatics. And I just think, I, I think what, uh, going off what you're saying, because I, I completely agree with you. I can't change. I feel like we're kind of at a point where BET kind of needs to like find their own identity, like in this like streaming era that we're in, because it's like kind of like everyone else is like kind of like 
placing their chips where they need to fall. But like BET feel it still feels like they're like one step behind everybody else. So they are shit. It ain't they don't feel like so this is gonna sound crazy too, because I'm not the fucking socially conscious motherfucker on the show. Like that's not even my deal. But the reason that the BET awards missed is that we as black people as a whole, right? are so spread out over the place with with where what you know i don't even know who the bet awards hit for so if there was 10 different categories of niggas i don't know which niggas are happy which niggas are upset because everybody's complaining about something i'm so, glad you said that that's brother. a good point that's I'm a really good point that, that brings it back to what childish gambino was in my opinion what he was actually talking about in that clip when he was basically saying, um, how much more entertaining do I have to do? You know what I'm saying? And we talked about his show, Atlanta. We talked about his song, This Is America. That was like one of the biggest videos ever the year. That was as big as fucking happy. Yeah, it was huge. You know what I'm saying? What was that? What was that one like kind of pop song that he had? Like the alternative record? Like one of those. I don't remember, but he, he right. the point is though, like he he does all has all this output. And I think that's why he said what he said at the end when he goes, if I have to do baby boy or, you know, I'll have Jonathan Majors put me in a headlock and shave my head, whatever, I'll do it. I think his point is BET only caters to one type of black person. Which is who? Which is your sexy red fan, your uh, reality TV show, ratchet TV show fan. Like they carry mm. an extremely specific audience now. That you know what I'm saying? So I think that's what Childish Gambino was getting at. He was basically saying, like, there's more shit out here that black people are doing, but y'all don't want to look at it as black shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I get categorized as something else, as other or whatever. Like, but like you said, Atlanta, that's a black show. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if there's white people in it, but everybody knows what's up with Atlanta. That's a black city. You know what I'm saying? Like, so he makes rap music. You know what I mean? So it's like I think that was his overall point is exactly what you're talking about, Mark. It's like getting to the fact that we just broke down who owns BET ultimately. It's owned by CBS, which is owned by George Cheeks, who was clearly a white guy. So that gets to your point about we can't do the Latin, you know, awards or the Asian music awards or whatever, because that's not our shit. Just like this isn't his shit. You know what I'm saying? So they're going to he's going to cater to his stereotype of black people. He's not going to cater to everybody. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's what ultimately what he was getting at with that speech. So what do y'all start? I agree. I agree. <laughs> I agree. 100%. So there's, there's so many times we have this argument of what is black America? Like, you know, it, from a political standpoint, from a social justice standpoint, from right. we are not a monolith and like, all that. Like, you know, like, this is gonna sound so cliche, but niggas was even divided on fucking Obama. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what? So, <laughs> how? If you if we can't agree on the fucking president, how the fuck are we gonna agree on sexy red? Like, it, it. I don't. This, you know, I use I, the woke mafia. I'm so woke. This is how I feel. I'm so woke, right, that I want to go back to sleep. <laughs> I don't, I don't, need, I don't want to be woke no more. I want to go back. I, I want to go back to sleep. I want to. I don't. I want to let you niggas. I want to nig. I want to let you niggas nig. <laughs> I don't want to be bothered. I don't want to talk about the nigga them, the nigga antics, the nigga shenanigans. I just want to go back to sleep. They don't want to, but that's what gets the most views out of everything. And that, that no. like, because you know when it's controversial, when when it is a little bit low brow, it's easier it's easier for more people to consume, you know. So I feel like it it'll also get people talking because there will be people like us who are dissenting. So it's you know I think that that's really what makes it seem as though um, those are the things in in black culture that are the most celebrated or like that gets us the most hype and it's like no that is something that 
definitely does get people excited and riled up, but it's not the only type of, you know, uh, of expression that we like. So uh, I think it kind of is a an outlier in a way. Like, I think it makes it seem as though it's something that we're, we're really wanting more of, but it's not the truth. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to turn in, it's, it's turning into everything we said we didn't want it to. So, you know, the whole, remember in sports, the, the LeBron comment, shut up and play basketball. You know, we're going to, we're, we're going to get to this. Oh yeah. Shut up and play, do play some drums, nigga. Sing your song, nigga. We're going to get back to that fucking, that essence of, oh, I, that's all I can do is sing and dance. Yes. Tap, nigga. We ain't, you, that's that's where we we're it's 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 we're going back. I feel like the needle's going backwards and not forwards. As it is. Uh, I see why you say that. It is, but we also still. I don't know. It's weird. I see why you say that because we still are the number one genre in the world right now. So it's like, are we the number one genre in the world because we made it that? Or are we the number one genre in the world because they want it to be that? Both. Forty nine fifty one. Because you can make the argument for both for both for both sides of the aisle on that argument for a pro and a con. Because we can't con- we don't we're not the orchestrators of our own destiny, you know. In the moment that you if you you if you put us in this box, right? And then somebody, we're going to go president of the fan club moment. Somebody like a gorilla comes outside of the box. That box now incorporates that to get bigger instead of recognizing its uniqueness and that it's a one out. Now they try to replicate that and it becomes part of the box where, you know, it's so it, it, it just it's like the box like they just keep it feels like you keep moving the goal post like as you know we can never get a touchdown because the goal post is always moved like we coming up so here in, in st louis ferguson august 9th is a 10-year anniversary of fucking michael brown death right 10 years ago that happened ferguson shocked the world right after mike brown and ferguson there were about we're, we're just going to say 10 different ways. I'm not different ways. 10 different Michael Brown situations from the Eric Gardner's to the Aubrey's, you know, just around Sandra. Blank. There were just 10 different occurrences of black police shootings. Right. And it all got us to the t- all got us to the same spot of nowhere where it was never the police's fault. For whatever reason, for whatever manipulation, for whatever reason, for the, the same thing can be said about music. The exact same. There's no one who is just like it, you think of tour wise, right? There, every white artist or different genre artist tours 15, 20 years off an 80 off of one run. One. One, could you imagine just in a hip hop, just in a hip hop state, right? The only body of work that we have for 2024 is Jeezy's Trap or Die, and it's still relevant today. You'd be like, what the fuck? Like, I'm so sick of this nigga. Okay, I get yeah, it. like if I was like the only one. That's the only. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The only one. Yeah, this AR-15 oh, has God. a gangster grill. We got it. We got the AR-15 has. We trap or die. We we understand. We got it. That's the only thing that we can do. Yeah, we, we we're good. We we understand. He didn't die. He out the trap. Like that's <laughs> like. Could you imagine him doing this? I mean, repetitively and staying relevant. That's another thing. Not just doing it with your fan base, but staying relevant at the top. Like arena yeah. shows or stadium shows, and G like Jesus bringing like instead of not like us, you hear fucking trumpets from fucking DJ Drama. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. 
for 20 years you've heard these same trumpets. And these trumpets now get sampled. And now these other trumpets are in other songs that have sampled. Like that's Sting. That's Bruce. I, that's the you no. Know, those are the. That's what my point is. That we we don't have that kind of longevity, and it's a very plethora of reasons. You can call it attention span, whatever. But that just doesn't happen for us. So I mean, I think we're getting there, though. I think because the thing is, is that hip hop to me, is still so young. And I bring this up all the time, but hip-hop is still at such a youth infancy stage that we are still at the point where we haven't even categorized subgenres in rap yet. You know? We have hip-hop and rap. Those are the only two subgenres, and we don't even really know the difference between those two. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of subgenres in between just those two names, but we haven't even fully clarified those yet. So I, I think until the we get to that point, I think that it's going to be hard to categorize everything. But at the same time, we also do have rappers who are now reaching that stage to where they are legacy acts who can tour the same way that certain rock bands do. Right. Like your Snoops, your uh your uh Wu Tangs, like like those guys who are like 50 and up, like your Nas's, like Jay whenever he decides to pop out. Because he still does whenever he decides to, but like those type of those type of dudes, like they they still are carrying on a legacy to put on the fact that, hey, when you get up to this age, you can still do this. You can still tour. But, Too you know, I just, think it, I just think it comes with a certain type of artist and also the certain type of fan base that they have, too. Like, the guys that I mentioned, like, they have cemented fan bases, whether it's mainstream or not. Too short, E40, those are two other names. And then while you was <coughs> excuse me, while you was um speaking about the kind of like one hit wonders who can still survive off of uh tours, I was looking it up and no shots because he's successful, but I looked up Tone Loke just to see if he tours still. He's on tour right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Tone Loke is still touring. Off of Funky Cold Medina and Wild Thing. Let me look up the, the dates one more time. I mean, shit, Sir Mix-a-Lot is, too. Uh, July 19th, he's in Sacramento. He's in Connecticut on August 9th. Like, he's got dates. He's booked still. You know what I'm saying? And, so it's like, and then, yeah, Sir Mix-a-Lot is another one. He can do Baby Got Back till the day he dies. That, that's all he has. That's all he has to do. That's Who all cares? And see, the thing about it is, we see the big tours that get announced. Like, we see the, oh, Travis Scott is going on this 60-date tour, and he's going to America, he's going over to Europe, he's going over to this place. Oh, Beyonce is going on this tour. Like, all these, like, big-name artists. Like, oh, Kanye is doing a pyramid show in Egypt, whatever, whatever. But they never, ever mention the artists who are the legacy acts who still get booked regularly. That's why they have the Vegas right residency shows. That's why artists like Usher are able, able to be there for like six months and just pack Vegas out every single night for six months. You know what I mean? Like a lot of these smaller shows will not get mentioned because they're not put on by like the live nations of the world or anything like that. But that doesn't mean that they're still not big time. They're just not being put at on a platister because everybody else has to make their money, how they got to make their money. Right. And it's not, and I think people want to, when you put something in the news cycle, a lot of times you don't want to put something in that has been talked about many many times like 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 you guys said these people have been touring for years and years and years so it is kind of like i think that they think if we talk about newer artists 
doing something, it's more relevant. It's more, you know, it it, it is just, uh, you know, spicier, newer, fresher. So it's going to be more of a headline news. So, you know, I, I think it is um, misleading for sure. And, and I think that um, at least like they, tr I think they somewhat tried with the BET Awards because they did decide to um, do the Lifetime Achievement Award for Usher. Um, granted, it was around the time that he just came off of the Super Bowl. So I don't know if it's like, oh, well, you know, it's just a tr strategic move of like, we're just going to get some more eyeballs on this. Either way, it works. Um, and then, you know, like I said before, like Lauren Hill was up there. I was surprised that she decided to pop out and, and grace us with a performance, especially at the BET Awards. I, um, you know, I think that they're attempting to do this new merge um, uh, of everything. But I don't know exactly how it works when, like we were talking about like Atlanta before with Ch Childish Gambino. Like I know that that's on a totally different network. So I don't know how these channels really try and highlight TV shows that aren't produced by their studio or, or by the parent company at all. So that's where I kind of feel like we probably won't get anything other than a lot of performances just because of that whole, you know, business competition situation between the, um, the, the, the studios, you know what I mean? So I think that's why it's going to be swayed for some time, but can it get better? Can it get better? Yeah. Um, like honestly, I think that they have room to get better, but I think that like you were saying earlier, it's kind of hard to tell like what it is that people are even looking for when it comes from BET. Like they don't put on put music on really anymore, but all of it is showcasing, you know, music. So I don't I don't really I don't really see like, you know, that there's any like even um, awards for like their own shows, unless I'm wrong. But I didn't even see any awards for like the shows that they put on. And it just seems like it's all about music. And so I think, yeah, it is kind of confusing how, you know, it's a little bit misleading because it is supposed to be black entertainment. And it does seem as though it's just specifically focusing on music. Um, so maybe that I think that is an area where they could could definitely improve for sure and i'm surprised like tyler perry wasn't there either a lot of his shows are are on the network i mean so i'm just surprised that there wasn't some type of of more cohesiveness this year on like the overall brand mm. they definitely have more money i'll say that there was a lot of money behind these sets and before performances i could tell that for sure more than the past I think it has to be. It can't look like a rinky dink award show. So if they gonna put if P CBS does the Grammys, does Billboard, and then has a third of that budget for fucking BET, that's a headline in itself too. So they they have to by default. By I mean, by yeah, by default. So if those are thirty million dollar productions. BET got at least C20 of it. I ain't saying you get the whole 30, but they got at least C20. Cut 10, you know, so that's yeah. that. And I feel like people looked better this year. Like, I feel like people didn't look as crazy as they might have last year. I don't think there was anybody crazy on on the on the carpet at all. Not for real. N nobody that I saw. So I feel like they're cleaning so it up. It was, it was, and then, okay, this is the elephant in the room, and I hate to to say this because I really do like her as a person. Taraji was under the influence of something. I don't I don't I don't know. I'm not I'm not gonna sit there and speculate and say she had a Wendy Williams moment. I'm not gonna sit there and say she was, you know, uh high. You know, I don't I can't say it was booger sugar, can't say it was weed, can't say it was liquor. I don't know if she had medication and had an adverse reaction. You know, I, I I legit do not know the reason of her altered state. 
I just know her state was altered some way, somehow, some form. That was not the Tarot. Like, I, she was, that was, I don't know if it was too much of the, like, the night before pre-gaming or just, I, I, I have no idea what caused, but that was not Taraji P. Henson. You didn't like her her hosting performance? I thought she was like real upbeat. I don't know about if I thought she was under the Yeah, from an elevated heart rate. <laughs> <laughs> she was <laughs> killing it though. She <laughs> was up there dancing. She was doing a lot. Okay. I think yeah. that the writers had her doing a lot this year. And and I think that she was trying to come off as like a comedian. But you know, she's she's actually an actress. So I think it was a lot for them to also a comedian and they also had her dancing. So I feel like they were asking for a lot. Okay. Marcus, what was that question that you asked earlier? Who is this for? Who oh, who is what? Who is like who is this for? That was kind of my number one takeaway from mm, yes. the whole BET Awards. Who is this for? I got I can see that. I is this like for who, um, is this for the young black kids who want to aspire to look up to what they're seeing presented on stage? Is it for the slightly older kids who want to look up to what they are already chasing and what they're already close to being? Is it for the older cats who want to look back on some nostalgia type shit? Like, who is this for? And to me, I don't really think the BET Awards has answered that question in a long time. And this night in particular to me just kind of seemed evident to that. It was kind of all over the place. Hmm. Yeah, there was, a, there was a lot going on. I can't lie. Um, I didn't expect Taraji P. Henson to be talking about Project 2025. Um, I know that she's been doing... Well, I, she just dropped um, a video with the vice president, Kamala Harris. Um, I guess just urging people to go out and vote and trying to explain some more about don't don't get taken over by the far right agenda, apparently. Um, so I didn't expect her to talk about it, but um, I think that that was the part that was like, that that made me stop and think like okay is this a her being sincere does she really care about the vote or is this a part of the, the normal press run that happens around the presidential nomination or you know the president presidency um when like they start democrats you know they they start upping the the dramatics and they start kind of pandering and I, mean, I remember when like Joe Biden went on Breakfast Club and was like, "If you don't vote for for me, you're not black." It's like, yeah, I remember. Oh, that I remember is so Hillary, that's the part that was. I remember when Hillary went on there and said that she carries hot sauce in her purse. Yeah, the hot from the hot sauce in my bag. Yeah, we knew that was a fake. But just imagine this though, and I can't even knock it because I would, I would, I, I ain't gonna say I would fuck with it. I said I couldn't knock it. Sexy Red has this whole media campaign. Sexy, bring I'm bringing sexy back. Make sexy great again, right? What if Trump brought her out? Oh my god! Sexy like, seems like the type to be able to get to get paid. I, I, I'm not gonna say I would agree with it. Of course, the messaging behind it. I'm just saying that it would work. I swear, Vezo and Peasy from Detroit just was with Trump and posted pictures with him on Instagram. They just yeah, that's true. So, I wouldn't put it past anybody. He pardoned a few rappers, like yeah. He let a he lot pardon of pardoned Kodak Black. Fair, you know what I'm saying. He let a lot get of him black. Get him black. Get him black. Get him. You know what I'm like if he can keep his mouth closed long enough, he realistically has enough black people that will back him. Nah, like, he's gonna he's gonna win. He's I'm definitely, not even, gonna, win. I'm, he's I'm definitely gonna win. Yeah, I mean, I want Sleepy Joe to get it, but. And that, that's the thing, like, just to, like, speak on that real quick and then, you know, we can get into the uh, to the Drake single if y'all want. But um, oh, yeah. 
Yeah, they definitely ramp up. I, I think it's both, Allie, to answer your question. Like, does she genuinely care about politics? I would say probably yes. Um, but <laughs> does she probably know what she's really talking about for real, for real? No. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's both. It's like they're the Democrats are using celebrities who, you know, they can convince like, hey, Trump's evil. And if he gets in, he's going to steal democracy and all that type of shit. So isn't it already so? Truth be told, isn't democracy a long time ago? That, that shit happened when Bush was in office, but I digress. It's a different show. Politics as usual. Check me out. But um, yeah, like so they, they definitely use celebrities because they know that celebrities aren't not all celebrities. Some celebrities do follow the day to day politics and really know what's going on. But for the most part, they don't have time for that shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's like they're not going to know all the nuances. They're just going to assume you know, whatever sounds good. Like, okay, yeah, Trump evil. Okay, I'll go out here and say that. So she probably feels like she's doing the, you know, and I'm not saying Trump's not evil. Like, I don't fuck with Trump. I'm just saying, like, you know, like, to say one side is, like, great and the other side's terrible, it's like, all right, like, you don't really know what's going on. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's why I feel like they are being used, but I do feel like she feels like she's being sincere. So... Right. And I thought it was just an interesting, um, out of all the things, I thought it was interesting that she picked Project 2025 only because um, it is, it, it, it's a proposal. So it's supposed to be like policy transition proposals that outline how former pres President Donald Trump, if elected, could radically reshape the federal government. Um, don't get me wrong. Like it, it does sound crazy. It, it, it's not crazy. It just sounds very extreme. Like they were talking about dismantling the the um, board of education. Um, they were talking about. Uh, I'm sorry, the Department of Education. They want to dismantle the Department of Education. Uh, roll back a whole lot of uh, funding for climate change. Um, make the different departments. Uh, partisan but the thing is is that like it's a proposal from a group that supports Trump so we don't know if it's necessarily like his actual game plan if it's his actual blueprint just yet so it is kind of like all right you you you're yeah kind of like what Shane was saying in terms of like she's educating us on something but at the same time it's misleading because it almost sounds as though like this is exactly what he's going to do. This is something that he's come out and told people like this is the plan. What it's really like supporters of his definitely believe this plan, but we don't know how he feels about it necessarily. So um, just interesting. Uh, I think that um, it's also very coincidental that Childish Gambino was like, maybe I got to do a baby boy when like Taraji was literally in that movie <laughs> and she's those. So maybe, maybe he has a point, who knows? I didn't even think um, about that. Anyhow. Yeah, so, that's a good point. <laughs> right? That was like, Yvette who was hosting, that wasn't Taraji. Okay, honestly, I was kind of thinking that she was given a vibe of like, remember when she was Cookie from, um, what was it, Empire? Empire, yeah. Mm -hmm. she, was, she was just kind of giving me oh. the theatrics of that. Okay, did you see when she messed up the key fleet? Oh my god, yet yeah. how awkward. How do you think it was yes. awkward or do you think it was like a blunder? Like because she legit did not know. Yeah, I would say I don't I think that they probably told her he's gonna be in this seat. And I don't think that she probably actually like looked at a photo of him before going out there. I yeah, no, there was no way. The teleprompter. <laughs> yeah. Which, uh, I mean, I get, you know, when it's a live show, it's a lot of pressure. So, like, you know, power to her for still pushing through, even through that moment. Because, man, I would have wanted to crawl up and die. But um, that that is what happens when you get people who are writing for you and you gotta like do a live show and go from this set to that so that it's like okay all right i messed that one up so yeah she shook that one off though she kept it moving she tried anyway um okay so um all right so should we switch gears is there anything else that we should talk about with the b2 or should we switch gears into drake's newest singles 
what Camila Cabello. Switch gears. 